Harry Parch, whose instruments we're celebrating, uh, built three kinds of marimbas. He made a diamond marimba, which was an alto instrument. He made a bass marimba. He was very proud about that. He went down to a cello C. Mm -hmm. But he watched poor bottom end give me that bass. And that was terra incognita in the 1950s. He actually had to uh, get a buddy who was an MIT dropout and an absolute whiz at designing things to help him design the darn thing. That was up uh, at uh, in Sausalito in one of those, you know, the, the, the Pier 5, was it? Yeah. Gate 5 Ensemble. Yeah, that was thank that you. part was of it? Harry Parch's history. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So they started exploring and they came up with this. Now, Harry made his bass marimba by himself mm. and he he wasn't quite sure how long the resonators needed to be to help amplify the, the notes of the keys themselves. So in the bass marimba, he built them, uh, the, that cello C, boy, it was big. It was almost, almost five and a half feet long, right. just the resonator. Right. And then he figured the notes he wanted for the contrabass marimba, the eroica, that they would have to be at least 12 feet long, which means, uh, which means forget about it, it's not gonna work. There's no way, no how. So he did something different. He used what's known as a cavern resonator. Mm. This huge box, is, you can tell just by the scale. Now, now TJ here is, is well over six feet and I'm <laughs> uh, almost pushing six feet. These things are huge, they're absolutely amazing. And basically, it, it's as big as a mattress lying down because the space inside does the resonation. Now, you know, I have a question. Please. Was there not another version of this instrument that Harry built where the resonators did go vertical rather than horizontal? Actually, almost. Almost, okay. What happened, his first marimba Iroka only had three keys, and that mm. would have been these three. Okay. And this is what he used for uh, King Oedipus in his 1951 composition. And you can actually see an old funky newsreel of, of one of the women at Mills College playing this thing. At Mills College in Oakland, California, a revolutionary idea is in the making. Students of the new instruments and composer and designer Harry Parch create weird and unique music on cloud chamber bowls derived from atomic research and a kithara of 72 strings. The diamond marimba. This modern orchestra produces music in 43 tones instead of the usual 12. So you played it like this and that didn't work out so well. So okay. he said, you know, no, we need to lay it down. I need to be able to play it. Actually, why don't you get up there and show you us bet. how you play these things? Because talking about sound is a little bit like uh, talking about food. Right? <laughs> you have so, to taste it. There you go. So you we need have to hear it. four notes. So from high to low. You can see it wiggling, right? Could you hear anything? One more time. Look at this thing waggling. That's Boy. going back and forth. It's vibrating at 22 cycles, 22 hertz. Basically, the human beings can't hear sound below about 20 cycles per second. This is right at the bottom of human perception. And yet, you can feel the room going like this. I can feel the air pushing inside my ears, actually, especially on this low key. Yeah. You can feel the compression of the air move inside the space. And it's a thrilling thing that he did because uh, he made it for dramatic purposes. The first performances of the Eroka were with King Oedipus, that mm. wonderful uh, dramatic uh, uh, dramatization of it. And you got emotion coming in and say, Where's, why am I feeling that? Mm -hmm. You're literally feeling because your lungs are going rrr, 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 22 <laughs> times a second. This guy goes at 55 cycles per second. Well, so we have 55, 42, 42, 33, 33, and 22. Is there 
I'm sure that there are specific reasons for these particular pitches in Harry Parch's tonal world. Hmm. So what are the significance of those four pitches within his world of 43 tones centered on G? It's a little strange because this is an A, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is an E, this is, this is a C, mm -hmm. and this guy is just whatever it is. Right? <laughs> okay. And even in his wonderful book, The, uh, the Genesis of the Music, he said, well, it's approximately down there. We can't even measure down there. Wow. Well, it was 1950s. I mean, they had an oscilloscope, and they did that sort right. of thing. Um, it's a little unclear why he chose any of those notes. It's the same mm. thing with the bass marimba, because mm -hmm. it doesn't go up like a scale. Right. It jumps. Right. So he's doing very much the same thing here. Um, so that's a long answer to say, I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah. How did he tune these? You know, we have precision methods of tuning nowadays. Yes, right? we have machines. That we have machines so. that can do a lot of the tuning for us. And we all know that marimba bars, there's a couple of factors to what provides the intonation quality, right? Um, the length, the thickness, the width of the bar, the mass of the wood, mm -hmm. that's kind of the first and fundamental element of it. So you're going to be measuring out a pitch, and this is true for any marimba, um, depending on how thick the wood is that you're going to be using, you're going to measure out lengths of things. And then you go through a process of fine tuning, and that's usually a reductive practice. You're going to reduce mass. So exactly. Yeah, that you cut the arch out right. from underneath, and he tuned those with an oscilloscope mm -hmm. back then. He used his ear and, of course, uh, to make it scientifically accurate. But the big question is the coupling. Uh -huh. How do you get the resonator to talk to the bar? And in his book, Genesis of the Music, he says, well, you, know, you don't want them exactly right. You want to make one a little bit lower or a little bit higher to overshoot. Mm -hmm. Because if they're exactly the same, sometimes they fight a little. Mm -hmm. And he, he did it by ear. And you can actually, once you get one of these huge boxes, you can, you can fine tune it by making the opening slightly wider or skinnier. Right, or, or, or smaller. It's known as the Helmholtz resonance after Hermann von Helmholtz, the great Very good. 19th right. century guy. They got Harry started. I was going to say that he was a big figure in Parch's life. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So he, he went through that process. It, it took a very long time. And in fact, um, he ended up having to redo them because mm. uh, he made a couple little mistakes. And then when fine tuning, he, you know, these are all beautifully flat on the top, as were his originals. But then he needed to change some of it, and he said, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to the Mexican style of tuning. Okay. What the heck is that? They cut from the top. Interesting. As well as the bottom. Right, so right. So some of them <laughs> looks a little so bit So it tapers like down to very, very thin in the center. Yes, 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 right. but not because this is quarter sawn spruce. It's strong. You're not going to split course, them. Of course, of course. Still, don't hit them too hard. Right? <laughs> so, so here's a fun thing that, of course, when two notes play at the same time, they have combination tones. And if you play, for example, that A and the E together, give it a try. There's an A that's an even an octave lower I was going to say there's this. a subtone under there, yeah. right? And by the way, folks, uh, those of you who are watching and listening, first of all, can you even hear these if you're listening through <laughs> little earbuds, right? Not so good at low frequencies. But we happen to be at LA Percussion Rentals, and mm. all of these drums in here, as the air is going woo, 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 every drum head in this room is going like that back and forth. And one or two of them have snares on them. So you might even Yeah, there's a little buzz in, in the room. We can hear that. It's always good to get a buzz off of a, off exactly. a drum. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, does that happen with other combinations of Absolutely. the two together. So if I play these two together, what do we get? I can hear that actually coming through with yeah. the A. Because the it's combination amazing. tones yeah. are in the range of human hearing. It's right. added a third pitch, a ghost tone. Let's try these two together. These two together, what do we have? Goodness. Let's do one, one at a time now. So, we so if we hear the E first. Now together, C and E. You know, that's sounding more like a B to me than a C. But hmm. What do you think? 
you know, these tones, they're so low, I almost am not trusting my ears because there's that <laughs> illusion, the aural illusion, how the tones collide inside the ear structure. It's not quite difference tones that we're hearing, but it's a similar aural illusion yes, when you're true. so close true. because think of how long these frequencies are. The physical space, the wavelength, the is, wavelength huge. is huge. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, this was something Harry talked a lot about in terms of the relationship of the bar to the resonator. Mm -hmm. That the resonator is two and a half times the length of the sound wave, right? Most of, well, it depends what kind of resonator. If you're using a full if wave or a quarter wave or a half wave. Okay, so good. So. Well, this is part of our discussion, right? Yes. Now, um, other percussionists watching this, we know that um, the resonators beneath the marimba, let's say, mm -hmm. are specific lengths beneath that pitch. But as you get to the lower pitches, those resonators, they, the way they design them now are that they are tunable resonators. Because if you go to a place with high humidity, for example, mm. or the altitude changes dramatically where you're moving the instrument for a particular performance, then you need to adjust the length of the resonator in order to couple correctly with that bar. So are these resonators customizable? You mentioned that we can um, change the opening of the resonator. Well, if we had the cameras close, we could find out that actually the maker added pieces of wood to make it. Interesting. And what we've done in performances is, is that we bring a uh, gaffing tape. I and see. And all that does is just cover it up, just close that down a little bit. You can't go wider, but you can right. certainly make it right. go lower. Interesting. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. It's a real challenge, let alone <clears throat> cartridge. <laughs> Cartage is another, <laughs> we're going to have to do an entire video series on Cartage and get Dan from LA Percussion Rentals in to chat with us about that because it's its own issue to move these instruments it's, from. This practically needs its own truck. I know it. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Thank heavens there's only four of them. All right. So. Um, now, what repertoire are these particular in instruments featured in? The first piece, as I mentioned, was uh, written in 1951, and that was King Oedipus, and he used either all or some of the Eroica mm -hmm. for the rest of his career. Very interesting. all the other pieces. Very, so. very cool. So uh, don't leave home without one. Four of them. Four of them. <laughs> Any discussion about mallets? I mean, you guys can see these are just gigantic mallets. Um, you know, with an instrument that's this size, you want is the mallet to do as much of the work for you rather than muscling. Yes, you want yes. the weight and the mass of the mallet to produce tone. So I'm using a slightly off-center playing area. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get right on the note of the bar. Yeah. So like any marimba bar, coming off-center. And you can really hear that note roll out very nicely. Play it on the center to show the difference. On the center, I can hear a tick in there instantly. Yeah, yeah, it's that yeah. nodal tick that we know how to avoid, right? By moving off-center of the resonator. And you can hear that tick really pronounced, actually, when you come to the center like that. So, in fact, may I? Uh, what's inside of these things? And these uh, beautiful things are made by uh, Jason Gittner. There are two, if you can tell, uh, bottle stoppers inside. Do you know about approximately how much they weigh? Uh, I did at one time. It's, uh -huh. what, what do you think? I eight would pounds? probably say about eight pounds, yeah. somewhere between six and eight <laughs> pounds. There's a lot of weight. And then this is lamb's wool covering it. Exactly, right. exactly. But, uh, and actually we have a picture, which we'll show you in just a second, of one of Harry's first mallets. And it's, luckily, it's coming apart. You can see what's inside, uh -huh. it, which is wonderful. But Harry was very, very sensitive to, well, well he had a limited set of instruments. And right. he got as much out of them as he could. His bass, remember, he would say, you played on the end, you played in the center, you used your fingertip. He used to play this thing with his hands, and he had these weird glove holders. They're almost like, I don't even know what to call them, almost like pillowcases. And he would uh, maybe do a little, here, I'll take that other one. Sure. Do a little, little hand soloing on these guys. <laughs> He never played like that. <laughs> he was usually full palm all the way. Full palm the yeah, whole way. Yeah, so if so that full palm, again, in the center, off center, instantly I want to I want to start playing slap techniques, yes, right? Of I mean, that's kind of where my mind goes anytime 
I get my hands on an instrument particularly is what are the articulations that I can change yeah, up to start producing tone. What happens with the big guy when you whack it down? It does happen. Can you even roll? <laughs> You know, we were talking during our setup that this sound is so low, I don't even think we have enough room in here for this sound wave to properly roll out and return to our ears. Because that's how bass frequencies speak, right? Mm. They need to roll off the instrument and then return to you. That's right. That's part of your uh, internal experience of pitch with something that's that low. Uh, should we go down to Disney Hall and give it a check? There, that's it, that's a good solution. <laughs> well, there's um, your weapon, sir. Thank you. I wanted to ask really quickly before um, we sign off here about the maker of this particular instrument. I mean, we all know that Harry hand-built his, his friend from MIT helped him with the resonator design. Yes. Bill Loughborough, by the way, who Bill also Loughborough. invented the boob amps. Aha, uh -huh, right. Were played by Chet Baker, because he was also a jazz musician, right, this guy. Right, right. I mean, a physicist and a jazz musician. Beautiful. Can't beat it. Beautiful. So Chris Banta made these. Okay. Chris Banta, who is a wonderful, uh, he's, he's a jazz musician. He plays about four or five different instruments. But he makes marimbas. So that's one of his favorite things to do. Mm. And he had always, even before I contacted him, he knew about these. Mm. And he was just so happy that I was able to commission him to actually do it, because this is not something you take on lightly. Oh, no way. And actually, if you Google Chris Banta's name and go on his website, he's got pictures of how these were made and the many, many different processes that it went through. So Amazing. these wouldn't happen if it wasn't for Chris Banta. And Chris is local here in Los Angeles. That's right. That's right. right. So that's how we come to know Chris and his work. That's right. right. In fact, Just he's made quite a few marimbas that are here at LA Percussion Rentals, too. So Excellent. Excellent. Um, Anything else you'd like to add about the marimba eroica, John? Let's play it some more. Let's, Let's play, play some more. I don't think we can ever get enough of these low, <laughs> gorgeous tones here. So we'll see you next time, and we'll talk about some of the other marimbas, the bass marimba and the diamond marimba, and all of the parts instruments. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. We'll see you again very soon.